Great. Wow. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you, Peter and Crystal, for having me here today. Really appreciate that. Uh, I do see we have a smaller crowd. I wanted to go around and ask everybody what you do, but uh, I, I hear there's a networking event, so we can probably uh, postpone that for that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to start in telling you about my story here. So uh, again, my name is Isar Mustafanejad. I uh, received my PhD here from the University of Hawaii in electronics engineering in 2010. Um, let's see what the next slide is. Oh, yeah. So this is what we do at Nala Scientific in one slide. Uh, I promise you this will be the only technical slide. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. There's going to be more. Um, so we make uh, microchips. And here's an example of a micro, microchip that you can open. If you open your computer or cell phone, you'll see these tiny electronics in there. And this is one that we designed and then sent out for fabrication, and it came back. Uh, it has a picture of Oahu on it, so it, has, it says Honolulu, Hawaii on it, so we actually made this. Um, then we uh, hook it up to a special type of sensor for a special type of processing. Uh, one example is in a particle collider experiment that you see on the top right. This, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. This is an experiment in Japan that tells you about basic laws of physics, like energy and matter. Um, it has other applications. The microchips that we make have other applications. They can be used in, in LIDAR, it can be used in radar, it can be used in medical imaging. So we're um, scratching the surface there trying to find other applications for this, uh, this device. This is where we are. We're at the Manoa Innovation Center. Who has been there? Any of you? Oh, great. Excellent. So skip this part. But our team is a highly educated and trained team in integrated circuit design, programming, physics, and, um, and other aspects of engineering, essentially. Where do we start? So uh, my story started with a search for new physics. I'll go back to the original my story later, but this is the recent my story. Uh, I have been going to the city of Scuba, which is in uh, Japan near Tokyo. Anybody knows where Scuba is? OK. It's uh, 60 miles out of Tokyo. Uh, it's very convenient to get to. Uh, they have a buried. Uh, underground facility there that is accelerating <laughs> electrons and positrons in opposite directions and then they collide them with each other as a cartoon of how it'll look like. Uh, it's, this is the size of a six story tall building and uh, you have a positron and an electron or the other way around, I don't know which one it is. They collide and they create all sorts of other tiny uh, nano sized particles, subatomic particles and then the physicist will have to track and count and figure out what these particles are so that they can find answers about the basic laws of physics. Um, and then that'll tell them about the basic laws of energy and matter. Maybe there's new types of energy discovered. Maybe there, there's new types of matter discovered. So um, it's a very, very uh, high-tech facility, essentially. Uh, if you're curious, I encourage you to watch this movie called Particle Fever that's actually on YouTube for free. Uh, it's a little documentary. Uh, when I was a postdoc at the University of Hawaii, we were making uh, advanced microelectronics. And here's a picture that I took of the graduate students and, and a professor here overseeing them and me overseeing the prof professor overseeing the graduate students making these tiny microelectronics that go inside this very advanced scientific facility. Then we shipped those microelectronics to the facility. It got installed and we went from 2015. This is how the uh, this factory essentially looked like. It's huge. It's the size of a six story tall building and onto 2018, which again, these are pictures that I took myself of the progress essentially. And uh, there are 900 uh, people working on this. This is one of the most complicated machines ever built by mankind. So uh, 26 country collaboration, billions of dollars trying to figure out, answer the question where we came from essentially. So, and we are making measurement devices that go inside these facilities. So I, I did my time there. I, I learned a lot of new things in the technology side. And then I was scratching my head. I was like, why isn't there a company that makes these and sells the, the physicists these, these devices so they don't have to start inventing it from scratch every time? So I decided to start a company. Uh, but in order to start a company, as you have probably uh, learned in classes, you need, uh, it's like a four leg stool. So you need four legs. Uh, you have an idea, it's, okay, that's great. You have a team, that's great. You have a market, that's great. Check all those boxes, but then now you need money, uh, aka capital. So uh, where do you get money to, to test your idea, to, to figure out if it's going to work, to um, uh, make a little prototype out of it? 
uh, self-funding is one aspect, so um, clearly that was out. I didn't have any money. I uh, uh, did not, uh, uh, yeah, so the, I couldn't, I couldn't self-fund this. It's very expensive designing advanced microelectronics. You know, who can, you know, it's not like $10,000, $20,000. It's millions of dollars, essentially. Um, going to private equity, that's, again, another challenging aspect. So that means going out for asking for uh, private uh, uh, venture capitalists, essentially, or, or seed funding. So uh, again, you might have uh, heard of these terms, uh, but these are people that give you some money. In return, uh, they will take ownership in your company, and then down the road, uh, if when your company becomes big, they'll claim a portion of that, and, and that's how they get rich. That's how you get your company. That's how everybody ends up being happy. But it's, again, very complicated route. Uh, the third route for me was to go to government, United States government. Uh, they have a program called Small Business Innovative Research, and that is essentially a $3 billion government uh, program that they are giving money to uh, companies with innovative ideas that are solving problems for government customers, essentially. So they are funding underserved markets, essentially. Uh, so we went through that program. We were able to get some uh, funding, essentially. The first contract we got was 100K. Then we got another 100K. Then we got a million dollars. Then we got another million dollars. So uh, so far, we've secured about uh, $3 million uh, in um, SBIR funding, essentially. Um, and, uh, and what we've been doing since uh, over the years, so FY means uh, fiscal year, 16 to 20. Um, we have also subcontracted some of that uh, some of that work to the University of Hawaii. So we've been giving about uh, half a million dollars back to UH. And what happens is the University of Hawaii hires uh, postdoctoral fellows, graduate students, uh, some materials and supplies, and they, they do some of the technical work. And when these students graduate, uh, we will essentially hire them. And uh, so that, that can actually open new doors for us. So we do workforce development by uh, having a graduate student at UH work on this. So Karim is actually one of the students from electrical <laughs> engineering. So yeah. <laughs> so here's a live example right there. And here is a, a typical day at our office. Uh, you can see there's a big uh, uh, display there. Uh, that, that little picture here is a picture of the UH team uh, on the webcam, essentially. So we do a lot of close work with, with, UH, with the UH team. Uh, here's a picture of our team and our advisor. So you have me up there, um, electrical engineering, uh, multiple startups. Uh, we have Luca, who's our senior engineer, Dean, our senior engineer. Uh, these are people that, are, that have 20, 30 years of experience, so we're lucky to have them. And then we went out and farmed other, uh, basically, uh, junior talent who are now moving their way up. Uh, ben, Chris, Angela, and Marcus, who are doing software, hardware, uh, physics, a lot of other technical work, essentially. But in order to be successful, we have to tap into our uh, uh, pool of advisors. So these are people that we have known or built relationships with over the years, and they are uh, helping us open doors. So Sean is our government relations uh, person, so uh, we claim him as our DC office, essentially. So every time I go to DC, we're going out to uh, knock on doors in, at the US government and say, hey, what's going on? Give us more money. Uh, Jeremy is helping us with IP and legal. We, we create a lot of technology, so we need to make sure that they're protected. So we have to file patents and follow on those. Uh, strategic business, you know, Kevin is in the space industry, so he's helping us with the space uh, sector. Professor Varner at the University of Hawaii, he's in the physics department. He was my mentor when I was a postdoc uh, at UH, and, uh, and now we are subcontracting a lot of work to him. So he hires students like Karim and others that will become workforce for us uh, down the road. Craig and Rosie are uh, technology veterans in, in California, so they're in Silicon Valley and, and they're wearing many hats, so they're helping us with market development there. And our very own Ryan Ozawa, who's our media consultant, so he's helping us spreading the word out there. So a few more cool tech pictures. Um, this is a picture of our, uh, you know, our version one, over there, you can see lots of wires and, and really bare bones electronics connected to the computer. Uh, kind of really, you have to hack your way to use it. Version two is now a more dedicated micro uh, a PCB with uh, you know, our, our microchip there, connects to a USB, so it's a lot more user friendly. It has a GUI now. You can see pictures that comes out of this. So you know, we're slowly making progress. Um, 
another picture of, of one of the other microchips. So this one, we have a creative uh, way of naming our chips. Our staff are, are very creative there, so they named this microchip Aardvark, which actually stands for something in terms of it's a super fast uh, you know, microchip that does this and that. And uh, he actually put uh, these little you know, speed dashes there, so it means that the Aardvark animal is actually going really fast. Um, but if you open it up, there are millions of transistors inside it. So these transistors are tiny switches that uh, do all the calculation. If you put them the right way, they can calculate uh, and, and convert analog signal to digital and, and do all sorts of signal processing on those. Again, another picture of inside the microchip. So this is really tiny. It's maybe five millimeter by five millimeters. And uh, uh, it has different uh, components inside it. Uh, we, and along the process, we have to go out there and show uh, our technology to the world, essentially. So we go out to uh, uh, different uh, uh, symposiums and conferences. So we actually are able to get funding from the government uh, that, and the government pays for this. So we can actually go out and spread the word of Aloha and ask for more contracts and more funding and, and get some sales going on. So here at the bottom, this is a picture of our, our setup in Australia. We had a live demo. And in the back, two of our engineers are talking to uh, a scientist who, uh, from another entity, another university, who is interested in possibly purchasing some of our electronics. Um, again, some more of these. So we, we keep doing that. At least we're gone at least once or twice a month to one of these big events and, and showing off uh, our, our electronics, basically. Uh, in the meantime, we've been getting some media coverage, too. So. Uh, my job is to kind of present the company and be out there and, and kind of be able to talk about it just like this. So uh, go, go give interviews, go give, uh, give talks here and there. And, and some people ask us a lot of good questions during these events. So uh, people ask me, for example, why, why are you doing this in Hawaii? Why, why don't you go to California and in the Bay Area? That's where the mecca, that's the mecca of microchips and electronics and everybody's there. So our answer is, uh, it's kind of a strategic location for us. We're working with customers in Japan. We're working with customers in West Coast and East Coast. So time zone wise, in the morning, we can talk to the East Coast people. In the afternoon, we talk to the West Coast uh, and, and Japan people. Um, so, and we have this relationship going on. The other one is the University of Hawaii. So uh, we are collaborating very uh, closely with UH. I am a UH graduate. Everybody at their company is pretty much either UH graduate or has solid UH ties. Um, so, and we have a good uh, pool to tap um, into wor uh, uh, workforce that comes out of UH. And, and UH has a, has a world-class facility. There are billions of dollars of research that's spent here at the University of Hawaii, so why can't we tap into that? So we're constantly going after, talking to more, more professors, more labs to actually leverage uh, the work that's been done here. And the other one is, you know, I feel that I've, I've been lucky that I, I, I landed in Hawaii and, uh, and I, I learned some things here, and you know, now I can uh, give back. I can hire students that come out of UH. You know? So that's, that's, that kind of is, uh, is one of my motivations. And it, it can make an economical uh, you know, impact to some extent. So think about it. Uh, one of the things that people talk about is, is having uh, higher paying jobs here. And that is possible in, in technology sectors. Essentially, these are very highly talented and well-compensated individuals that are working for us. So six-figure jobs, that's, the, that's really the bottom of the pool. You know, you've got to go up more, actually, <laughs> to be able to bring this kind of ta talent on board. And we were going out there, and uh, you know, we, are, we are kind of exporting the Hawaii brand also, uh, to some extent. So, but we work, we work hard, but we're, it's not always uh, you know, at least we have a good view. So we're at the back of the Manoa Valley, and this is a rainy day in Manoa, so you get the rainbow looking out. So this is nice, at least a little bit of a uh, rest for us. Uh, my story, so going back again to my real story, I got my bachelor's and master's degree in, in Iran, which is a country on the other side of the world, essentially. And then uh, I came to Hawaii in 2006 uh, to get a PhD in electrical engineering. I graduated, I started working. Uh, I got married, bought a house, and I was like, okay, let's stay here. In the meantime, we decided to move to New Zealand. So my wife and I moved to New Zealand and lived there for a couple of years. It was a great experience. But then we decided to move back to Hawaii. And uh, that's when I started a postdoctoral fellowship in the physics department. And, uh, uh, and then 
kind of knowledge scientific started after that to some extent. So I came with a good uh, understanding on the mathematics and physics side, but then I learned a lot more on the process side being in Hawaii, you know, such a diverse place. And um, the management, leadership, other skills kind of started building up while I was here in Hawaii, essentially. So my message to all of you, this is the last slide between you and food, is uh, never stop learning. You know, I've been uh, learning my whole life, so my early education And start your venture. You know, don't be afraid of it. Uh, what can happen? You can fail. So, and but don't be afraid of failure. You know, that's a simple message, essentially. Um, everybody fails. That's okay. As long as you learn from it, and as long as it's not catastrophic, you can always build up. And it's a lot easier to fail earlier and faster than later, right? Um, and also, don't rule out working for a startup or a small company. Uh, you know, there's always the opportunity to go out there and work for the Fortune 500 or the big, you know, the Apples and the Facebooks of the world. Those are always there. There's your chance, if you're early in your career, to go work for a startup, or for a small business, you wear lots of different hats. I can tell you all the benefits later, essentially. Uh, and, and you learn a lot more. And then you can go back to those bigger players and get actually a, negotiate a better deal with them, too. Because now you're coming with a lot of wealth of experience. If you're looking for funding for your venture, uh, do not rule out government. It's very complicated. People talk bad about the government all the time. Oh my god, it's big. You don't know where to start. There are lots of resources about that. So you can always look things up. You can talk to people. I have done that. I have talked to a lot of different people that have guided me to navigate this path. So don't give up. And then connect. Connect and connect. Always be talking to people, no matter what. It's, it never hurts to know people. I can tell you that. So there's a good saying that says, uh, your net worth is your network, or something like that. So I can totally relate to that. All right, well, thanks a lot. That's the end of it. I want to thank the Department of Energy for funding us so far. Uh, also, the Hawaii Technology Development Corporation, which is also at the Manoa Innovation Center. They have been a champion of technology development here, uh, University of Hawaii. Uh, Department of Physics and also the College of Business.